Still with me, Ned Ryan, along with David Tafuri. Uh, you guys, we heard a lot of different topics uh, at hand. We learned that the DOJ is working aggressively to find a replacement for James right. Comey there at the FBI. Uh, we did hear Spicer talking about the economy, trying to sing the economy's praises in, in terms of some of the companies that are adding jobs. And we heard an update on the hacking situation from the head of Homeland Security. Um, Let's let's start with you, Ned. You know, I, the one thing that surprised me was that no reporter actually asked about this potential uh, reorg, if you would, at the administration. I mean, that was sort of the news cycle all weekend long was that Spicer might be out and there might be a whole new team coming in. Bannon might be out. Reince Priebus right. might be out. And that Donald Trump wanted to bring in a whole new crowd because he was frustrated with this <clears throat> team's inability to really deliver the message that he wants delivered. No one asked it. Right. I mean, that is a little startling to me. You're right. Axios ran a story and then was talking about perhaps whole scale, throw the baby and the bathwater out. Let's start again. I mean, I think the one thing that is, is clear is that Donald Trump thrives on chaos, but at a certain point, chaos might work when he was doing his corporate work. But in the White House, he's going to have to figure out how do we get a more cohesive team together so we can drive the agenda. The thing that worries me a little bit, Trish, about some of this chaos that's taking place, mm -hmm. I'm afraid that if it doesn't, doesn't uh, turn around, it's going to eventually undermine his agenda. It, it, it's and a so, complete, total, utter distraction from what right. he needs to get done. I mean, and, there are very important issues at stake. Finish but, it, but, it, but it also takes away from the ability to drive a narrative. And I know that I've, I've said this many times publicly, they have to be more proactive in driving a positive narrative instead of being so reactive. And so, yeah. you know, I don't know what the shakeup will look like. I do think that there will be something taking place over the next few weeks, but we'll just have to see what it looks like. I, I think he's been ill-served, David. I really do. I mean, granted, some of it's his fault because he's out there, you know, making statements and perhaps not getting everybody on the same page in the same room saying, okay, here's, here's my thought process. Uh, so he's got one team trying to defend him, and then he comes out and sort of says something different. Now, I, I blame the communications team for that. I do blame him as well, though, to a certain extent. Well, you know, this administration has had a real difficulty communicating its agenda, pursuing its agenda, and accomplishing its agenda. I'm not sure who's at fault for that. Clearly, the White House is not running as smoothly as it should be running. I would note that one of the main people that people have talked about maybe fired is Spicer, so it would have been awkward to ask him in this briefing. <laughs> yes, this I briefing was returning. waiting for that, right? I thought, okay, well, this will be an interesting press briefing yeah. here today. You yeah. know, there should be some interesting fireworks. He's got to kind of protect his job in some way, and David not one of those reporters had the guts to ask him. That's right. Uh, but maybe they're being respectful to uh, give him a chance one day back. And he did a pretty good job, I have to admit, um, on, on a wide range of topics. There was a lot to unpack yeah, there. Yeah, well, this, so, this might be the first time they've even bothered to show to any respect at all. Let's right. face it. Ned, David, good to have you guys here with analysis. We're